In New Hampshire's second congressional district, Ann Custer's Democratic primary opponent called her an unelectable progressive. At a debate, she was asked, in a year when everyone understands that the country is moving back toward the center and away from the more left progressive point of view, if you were to become the nominee, would you try to distance yourself from your own positions? Custer did become the nominee, stood by her progressive supporters, and is now actually leading her Tea Party Republican opponent, former Congressman Charlie Bass. Joining me now is New Hampshire Democratic congressional candidate Ann Custer. Ann Custer, you are a, a study for Washington Democrats, progressives, moderate Democrats are studying your candidacy and saying, how is she doing this? Progressives believe that you're succeeding because you are sticking with your progressive ideals, your progressive uh, issues, and that, that compromising toward the middle of the party uh, would be a mistake for you. That seems to be the case so far, according to the polls, you are proving right in New Hampshire. How have you done this? Well, Lawrence, it's all about the grassroots. Honestly, this campaign is all about real people and real lives. And we're focused here in New Hampshire on creating good jobs. You know, Congressman Bass voted all those many years, 12 years, 15,000 votes in Washington for all of those failed economic policies, encouraging companies to ship jobs overseas. New Hampshire has lost 16,000 jobs to China. It's more as a percentage of our total employment than any other state in the union and it's not what we want to be number one at so i've been talking to families all across my district 130 house parties and i've just finished 30 diners in 30 days and i want to care more about main street than wall street i want to care about creating jobs and helping working families and if those are progressive values i am very happy and proud to stand up for them now just in case our audience is thinking ah she's got that liberal district in new hampshire the the second congressional <laughs> district in New Hampshire. Uh, by my quick glance, in the last hundred years, it's been a Republican-held seat for all but about, what, six or seven of those years? Absolutely. My entire lifetime. In fact, Congressman Bass has been a Washington insider for so long, he ran against my mother for this seat. I was <laughs> raised in a Republican family. And uh, he ran against her in 1980. She lost to Judd Gregg, who's now retiring 30 years later. And uh, our Congressman Paul Hodes has stepped up, and it's an open seat for the first time in 22 years. And I tell people on the campaign trail, that's how hard it is to bring change to Washington. But, you know, just as Joe Sestak just explained to your viewers, we need a new approach. We've got to put people first over politics. And that's what my campaign campaign is all about. We won 72 percent of the Democratic primary, and I was also the challenger. I did not come in with the party heavies on my side, and I spoke plainly to people. I went to their living rooms, 130 towns and communities and living rooms, and I said from the very beginning, we're going to win this race, one handshake at a time, one question at a time, and just listening to people about the needs that they have. They need help, and they need government to support the creation of good jobs so that families can thrive again once again here in New Hampshire. How important has it been to your campaign to be able to get help from outside the state? The Progressive Change Campaign Committee has raised over $140,000 for you. Uh, a lot of donors uh, to create that, the 13,000 donations. It's, it's like about 10 bucks a donor. Uh, with that kind of grassroots fundraising going on for you, I, I would imagine in that congressional district, that's real money. Well, it's real money where I come from. What, what I'm most proud of is that we've been doing that grassroots fundraising right here in New Hampshire. In fact, I've raised more from New Hampshire donors than any other congressional campaign ever before. And what I've learned from this whole experience, it, and I learned it on the Obama campaign, actually, is that when someone puts down $10, $20, $30 toward the candidate that they believe in, that's going to stand up for the values that they believe in, 
Michigan, they'll turn out to vote. They'll put a sign on their lawn. They'll come make phone calls and knock on doors. We have thousands of activists all across New Hampshire, and I'm very proud of the activists and donors that have joined us all across the country. We've got folks making phone calls from all around the country because they believe in this race and they believe that democracy is not for sale. I'm getting crushed with out-of-state ads and what is going to speak up on November 2nd right here in New Hampshire is people power. And we're putting people over politics and we can't be stopped. And Custer, I'm, I'm betting on you to be in the next uh, freshman class in the Congress. <laughs> and I'm wondering, what are you going to tell your fellow Democrats in the House who think of this election season as being an anti-Democrat uh, season, that that's what they're up against? Here you are running not just as a Democrat, but as a progressive Democrat in a very strongly Republican district, historically Republican district. Uh, what, what is, do you think there's a model that you have to bring to Washington to other congressional Democrats about how to do this? It's good old-fashioned politics. It's people power. This is shoe leather. I've been at this for over a year. It's handshake by handshake, door knock by door knock. Thousands of phone calls are being made. I have an extraordinary group of supporters and people who believe in people over politics. And when I talk about a new approach, it's that people power, it's those small contributions, it's the volunteer effort that's going on all over this district. That's what we need to do is take government back from the special interests. Congressman Bass is funded over half his contributions come from the special interests, and that's who he's the voice for. He voted for the deregulation of Wall Street. He voted for the deregulation of offshore oil and gas. These these are the crises that people have felt, and they're feeling the pain in their families. They're worried about our country, and we need to take our country back and put it back in the hands of the people, and that's what I'll bring to Washington, the voice of people power. And Custer, Democratic candidate for Congress in New Hampshire's 2nd District, currently with a healthy lead in the polls. Thank you for joining us tonight, Ann Custer. Well, every vote counts. Now, don't jinx me, Lawrence. Don't jinx me. Okay. We're working very hard. Six days to go. But thanks so much. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, thank you for having me on. Thanks.